let's just start off with kind of your most memorable moments within the fund. You went to a few trips throughout the years. Um, my most memorable moment with the fund, you being honest. Yep. <laughs> my most memorable moment with the fund was being drunk in New York. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I went to a conference out there, and I'm, I'm just saying, like, no, no bullshit. But, uh, um, I'm just kidding. The uh, most memorable moment, though, um, I'll say is uh, we went to uh, Durham, North Carolina, Piedmont Investment Advisors, um, and I think the guy, uh, the owner of Piedmont, uh, Isaac Green, his heritage is like related to Simon Green Atkins, so it was really dope just to you know, see their office and see how they operated and things like that. And they actually hired me on to do an internship with them um, on the day, so. Great. Now, speaking of those internships, you've had quite a few. Could you kind of share some light on what those experiences are like and how the transition is from, you know, what, corporate America as opposed to some students when they, over the summer they may not get an internship, but they may be at home working at the mall or there at a restaurant. Like, Kind of how do you make that COVID schedule or do you prepare for that environment? Uh, it's it's very important to to get internship experience. Like definitely, if you if you're trying to go the corporate route, um, if that's what you want to do, it's important. Like, cause I know I understand. Like, you know, how many how long have y'all um, like been in a part of the fund? Like, I've seen a couple of places. Y'all probably been a part of the fund for like one or two years. Do y'all know what y'all want to do? Like raise your hand if you know what you want to do after you graduate. Right. So, and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like, you know, like even like being in the fund, I knew I wanted to do something that was relatable to what we were doing every day in the fund as far as like picking stocks and, you know, pitching it to different people and things like that. But it's important to get that exposure to a corporate environment. Um, like my last internship was with Morgan Stanley um, right here in Western Salem. And um, it's like their wealth management department. And I didn't know anything about wealth management, just being honest. So when I went in there, one, I was, you know, an African-American male. I was the only black person besides Chris Lee. Um, who my mentor who got me in um, in the office, so uh, it was it was kind of hard for me to like embrace who I really was, cause like in corporate America, like I'm not saying they're not gonna allow you to be yourself. But it's kind of hard to stay true to who you are in that office, and that was hard for me. You know what I mean? Because I'm used to being this character that I am right now, but you can't do that um, in a corporate you know environment. And if that's what you really want to do, you know, if you're really trying to get into a corporate office and make big bucks, that's what you want to have to do. But the most important thing is knowing why you're there. You know, a lot of people, uh, including myself, I didn't know why I wanted to go into corporate America. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just doing it because I seen, you know, when I was here in the fund, you know, when we went to New York, I seen all these white dudes with a lot of money in these fancy suits. I'm like, man, that's dope. I want, I want that, you know what I mean? And they making big money. Like, you know, when I was in Durham, I seen like how much like these brokers was making like on Wall Street and everything like that. I'm like, man, I want that lifestyle. But at the same time, it's like, I had to question myself, like, why did I really want to do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, why, why did I want that lifestyle? So, um, circle back around, like, when you go into these internships and stuff like that, kind of go into it like open-minded. Like, is this what I really want to do? You know what I'm saying? Is this in line with who I am? Is this in line with my purpose? Because if it's not, then you're just gonna be there just chasing the wind and just chasing the dollar. And to be honest with you, to be honest with you, it's not fun. And you know, tying that into my book, you know, my book is a story about, you know, where I came from, you know, my struggle coming up, you know, getting into college and course going into the corporate world. I got fired from my corporate job. I was at Nationwide, I'm just being honest, um, because I just couldn't cope to their culture, you know what I mean? So um, it's 
just took me on a life journey, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I would have never got fired from that job, I probably would have never published or released my book. And it's like, now I'm in a position to where I'm connecting with people on a more genuine level, and I'm more so in line with my purpose and what I'm called to do. So, you know, it's really important for you guys to know who you are and know why you're here in college, why you're here right now, why you're a part of this investment fund, and so on. And it's great that you brought up the book. Um, can you maybe talk about more about how important it is to invest in yourself? I know me and you, you remember the, the conversation we had when we went to Columbia and initially we couldn't get funded and we said, all right, fuck it, we're gonna pay for it ourselves, let's go. Yeah. So yeah. can you talk about the importance of just investing in yourself man, and believing in your craft? Man, that's so important. I wish that I, I stayed true to that when I, when I first got into college, but I didn't have nobody like me. And that's why I'm like, I'm not, uh, Representative from Bank of America or whoever else y'all got. I'm, I'm a part of y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like we, I just graduated last year, so I'm coming to y'all humble and just keeping it real with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't have, we didn't have nobody like me to come back and talk to y'all. So I feel like it's indicative for me to be here right now, just to give y'all light and inspiration and stuff like that. So um, investing in yourself is key, and I'm gonna tell you why. Like me, I want to be an entrepreneur. Like you know what I'm saying? Like that's I, like, I'm all about being your own boss, investing in yourself, you know what I'm saying, having your own establishment, your own brand. And like, when I got fired from Nationwide, I was like, man, F corporate America. I'm not, I'm not going back to no other corporate office. I was like a rebel. Like, I had people calling me about jobs and things like that, and I'm like, nah, I don't want it. Because I understood how the system worked. Like, I understood how, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a divide. And Use the vibe. It's like, you know, you come in and it's like, yeah, you're making eighty thousand dollars a year, but you know, this guy up here, he making like eighty million off of your off of your work. You know what I'm saying? Off, off of the hustle and everything that you doing. You going in nine to five and everything like that. And it was just like I just had that mentality. Like I couldn't cope with that. You know what I mean? I'm like, if I if I work nine to five, I want to work for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, but biggest downfall is I ain't had a capital. You know what I mean? Like there's so many, I got a lot of brilliant ideas, a lot of business ventures that I wanted to start and everything like that, but I didn't have no capital. You know, and people always say it takes money to make money. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure y'all know that. You know, just being here in the fund and learning how money operates. Like we wouldn't have the money where we leveraged $40,000. We wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for the $100,000 investment that we had. And in college, you are exposed to a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? A lot of sources of income that you gotta take advantage of. Like, for example, your refund check. And yes, it's a loan, it's federal money and stuff like that. But you, if you learn how money operates, you could use that money as an investment and make a flip off of that. You know what I mean? Like, if I could go back in college right now, I would wanna like team up with like a Trey Ron or, you know what I'm saying, whoever, Charles and say like, Yo, let's let's come together. Let's put all our capital together, and let's let's come up with a business plan. Let's do this. Let's do that. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't thinking like that. Because I was ready to spend that money. But like when you out here on the real world, and you want to, you on the mentality that I'm on, like you know what I'm saying? When you want to be your own boss, like that would have been very beneficial to me right now if I would have had an establishment. And the biggest thing I preach is like when you look at like the Forbes list. Like when I was reading research. Like, Writing my book, I did a lot of research. Chapter nine is called Corporate America. And I, you know, talk about like what we're talking about right now. And it led me to do a lot of research. And I was researching like, you know, these billionaires and these, the owners of these corporations and stuff like that. And what I found was there wasn't a lot of people that looked like me. You know what I'm saying? You see like the Jeff Bezos and say like Warren Buffett and stuff like that. But you go down that Forbes list, I literally got like I was just going down the Forbes list, and I got to like 600 before I first seen the first African American, you know what I'm saying, billionaire. And I'm not saying that it's all of a black or white thing. You know what I'm saying? We all we all one race. You know what I'm saying? It's all the human race and stuff like that. But it's like I'm speaking from me because I'm an African American male, and it's like I see how we're struggling, and it's not a lot of opportunities. Like it's sitting, like you sitting. You can't really judge a person like, you know what I'm saying, corporate America, they look at your, your resume, your GPA, what is that really telling you? That's 
not telling you about a person like, I know I'm capable of doing a job, I know I'm capable of getting the work done and stuff like that, but they see my GPA, you know what I'm saying, they say like a 2.8, and they're like, oh, we want to turn them down, like, true story. So, like I said, I was at Morgan Stanley, and I was exposed to a lot, like, you know what I mean, they was, those white people, they, they transparent, you know what I mean, so, what they did, like every time a person will um, apply, like they send a resume out to the whole office. And um, it was a kid, Wake Forest, he was a freshman. He, uh, they sent his resume out. Um, he had like a 3.5 GPA. It looked good on paper. Like he had a 3.5, all of that, polished well. He didn't have no experience though. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he couldn't, you know what I'm saying? He a freshman. He, probably had on his resume like he worked at a movie theater or something like that. Literally they was like talking about this kid. Oh he's from Wake Forest. Oh I know his father. His father his father is a client of mine and all of that. I know everything. So another kid from his own state, you know what I'm saying? He sent his resume. I seen what they responded to him. They like, you don't have any positions open. You know what I mean? And it's like I knew the kid, you know what I mean? Like, I knew what he was about. I, I seen him, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he from Winston. <clears throat> yeah, he probably wasn't exposed to everything that the kid from Wake was exposed to, but at the same time, like, you know what I mean? I knew he could have got in there, and he probably could have reached a whole different demographic, you know what I mean? He could have brought in so many different clientele. He, you know what I'm saying? He could have, you know, brought in so many different clients and things like that and turned up for Morgan Stanley, but they not looking at it like that. They looking at that ink. They saying, oh, he went to Winston Salem State. Man, I had a conversation with one of the people, um, it's, it's crazy, you know what I'm saying? I had a conversation with um, one of the, um, what do you call them, the financial advisors at Morgan Stanley, um, older white guy, you know what I'm saying? Like he's, he, they have like this tunnel vision. He asked me like, <laughs> we had went to we went to that conference in New York. Um, you know, I had brought up the topic. I was like, <clears throat> like, you know, this is a great conference and everything like that. But like, we need this at Winston Salem State. We need this in Winston Salem. You know what I'm saying? Because people in my city, they never seen no black billionaire. You know what I'm saying? Robert F. Smith. Like, imagine what that would do if people like in our communities were exposed to that. Imagine what would trigger in their brain, brain, you know what I'm saying, just from seeing a black billionaire. I didn't even know it was a black billionaire. You know what I'm saying? And so I had that conversation with uh, the guy, the financial advisor, and he asked me a question. He was like, if you knew that, um, if you, he was like, if you knew that, if, if you went to Winston Salem State, that you would have got overlooked, then why did you choose it? And it hit me, I'm like, damn, you don't even know what it took me to get to Winston. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I applied to eight colleges, you know what I mean? Predominantly white schools, all of that. Like, you know what I mean? I was just trying to make it out. And Winston was the only school that gave me an opportunity. You know what I mean? And what I learned at Winston was more valuable than what I probably would have learned at a PWI. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, they got this stigma, like, you know what I mean? Like, they, it's, it's like, you got to work 10 times harder as a minority, you know, coming from a minority institution to to be on the level of a kid from Wake Forest who, who's a freshman that probably had one experience that has nothing to do with finance. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, my thing is now, like, yo, we young future, this world is ours, like, you know what I'm saying, like, we got a lot of space, like, we all brilliant, like, we ain't here talking about stocks and investments and what's going on in, like, corporate in the world, like, you know what I mean, and in our economy, like, that's rare, you know what I'm saying, like, if you do the statistics, and I don't know the statistics, but it's like, I do know that Winston is one of the few HBCUs with a student investment fund, so it's like, we need to take that knowledge and create opportunities. That's why I'm screaming, be your own boss. Because now we can provide that opportunity for that kid who 
wanted to apply at Morgan Stanley. I'm like, yo, Morgan Stanley not hiring you? Come work at our company. You know what I'm saying? And so that's kind of like you saying invest in yourself. That's why it's important to invest in yourself because the return that you're going to get on that investment is second to nine. And ain't nothing compared to that. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> corporate experience, even though you thought it was like a relief to be, I don't want to say removed, but kind of free from that job, yeah. do, do you have any regrets, or do you just feel like everything kind of happens for a reason, you kind of glad that things are doing What do you mean like regrets? In terms of like the way, like you remember when we went to Columbia and, and Mr. Smith told us, you know, a lot of people, they want to go out and do their own thing, yeah. but the smart thing to do is kind of have a plan before you leave, like, do you have any regrets? Like, maybe I should have kind of strategically had some type of thing set up so when that moment came, I could kind of easily transition to the next thing. Yeah, but I mean, part of it wasn't my fault, though. I mean, it was because like, I didn't. I was so caught up in that light, man. Like, I mean, young, I mean, the people who was here, y'all know me. Like last year, I was a completely different character. I probably would have been suited and booted today. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you got a question, like, what is that really? You know what I'm saying? Like. My, the, my voice is being heard, that's all that matters, you know what I mean? Like, if I die today, like, it don't matter if I was in a suit and tie or in my hoodie or in my sweats, like, the message is the constant, you know what I mean? So, but, like, I didn't have anybody to tell me, like, some real shit, like, what's really going on. And it's like, if you look at, like, how critical the world is in the day, like, you know what I mean? We need these people. You know what I mean? And it's like, I, I'm glad that, I, I guess to answer your question, I'm glad that I took the journey that I took because it really just opened my eyes to a lot, man. And it's like, you know, with the book, man, like, you know, I'm not to, not to brag about the book or anything like that, but it's, it's valuable to me, you know what I mean? And I think, like, it'll be valuable for you guys, too, because it's just like, there's so much insight in there, you know what I mean, about, like, everything that we're talking about right now, like, you know what I mean, like, the alarm clock, it's, it's time to wake up, because I was asleep, you know what I mean, and it's like, a lot of people are out here are asleep, you know what I mean, like, they trying to go taste the titles, they trying to taste the big shiny things, they want to get the big fancy cars, the nice apartments, all of that, and I understand that, but it's like, in the long run, like, all of that, like, we all going to the grave, and it's like, what does that mean, we all living to die, it don't matter if you didn't have nothing your whole life, it don't matter if you had everything in the world. It don't matter if you had $131 billion, Jeff Bezos. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all want to the work. So it's like, you got to understand, like, and I want to pose this question. Like, what do y'all feel like the most important thing in life is? Anybody? Happy. For me, it's family. Family. Finding the purpose. Right on, that's what I was looking for, your purpose. You know what I'm saying? Family is important too, you know what I'm saying? You can't operate without family. Everything you do is without family. But your purpose is valuable, you know what I mean? Like It gives all the, like I, I've got a quote in my book, purpose, like, and I'm blunt in my book too. I was like, purpose gives all the meaningless shit in life a meaning, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, now that I understand, like, okay, I'm in an investment firm, you know what I mean? Because I'm gonna do this so that I can get exposed to this person or that it can connect me to this person or, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna introduce me to this crowd or it's gonna teach me the mechanics of investment so I can go back and I can go teach the people, you know what I'm saying, where I came from. Like, yo, let me teach you how to invest into this stock. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, instead of you doing that, you know what I'm saying? Because that might get you, you know what I'm saying? locked up, or that might get you doing this, like, let's take this money and let's put it over here. If you can't do it, I'm going to do it for you. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like, damn, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's shedding light. It's giving light to, to life. It's shining light in dark areas and stuff like that. Like, and when you think about stuff like that, it, it, you know, it's, like, people always say, you know, follow your passion. You know what I mean? It gives you passion. Like, because now you know what you're doing. It for. Like, even with family. You know what I mean? Like, you, you're helping your family out. You know what I mean? Like, I was the first person in my family to get a college degree. You know what I mean? And now my nieces and my nephews, they look up to me like, dang, I want to be like you. Like, I'm heavily invested in my nephews. 
you know what I mean, all of that. So, yeah. And I ain't gonna hold too much of your time, but you know, I just. So, my last question would be before I open up to the floor. You don't see many people who look like us, and especially nobody our age yeah. write a book. Right. So, kind of give us some background in regards to what that process was like. Writing a book? Um, so, uh, I say this all the time, like, be honest with you, like, when somebody, from the, the person who inspired me to write the book, when he first approached me about it, he was like, um, yo, you need to write a book. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not about to write no book for what? Like, you know what I mean? That's not me. I don't got the time. I ain't got the patience for it. And that's whack. I'm like, who writes books? But the more I thought about it, the more I understood that I got a message for somebody. It may not be in this generation. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But somebody somewhere, you know what I mean, is going to want to hear those words. That's, or is going to need to hear those words that's in that book. You know what I mean? And, and it's going to change their life. And that's what really inspired me to write the book. It's way bigger than me. It's not about me. You know what I mean? If it was about me, I probably wouldn't have wrote it. Or if it was about me, I probably would have been commercial or some shit with it. Like, you know what I mean? If it's not about money, none of that. It's about changing lives and leaving a legacy because now words, I'm learning how powerful words is. If I die today, I'm gone. That's it. But the long clock's still gonna be on Amazon. You know what I'm saying? And that's just keeping it real. So once I understood that, I was like, yo. And then when I when I started doing it, like I started writing my book two years ago. I kept it quiet. The essence of moving the silence. You know, um, I found my love for writing. Like I really love writing. I love, you know what I'm saying, putting words together. I love poetry, all of that. So yeah. All right, at this time, we're going to open it up for questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. so, so at this point in time, do you still do investments on your own? Uh, yes, but not in the stock market. <laughs> well, I mean, that's one. I mean, but you're still doing investments of different types. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, you, so you're still, you still have the mindset. It's yeah. just you're doing it in a different way. Yes, sir. There's so many, like, uh, another, I'm glad you asked that, like, there's so many different ways to make money. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it's so you could do the littlest thing. Like, it's, it's if you like, and that's why I said it's important to have capital because you if you have capital, you can invest in so many different things. Real estate, you could buy uh, like uh, equity into like different like season tickets and things like that, and make it like it's so you you'll be surprised how many different ways you can. Make money, but even with the book, you know what I mean? Like that's an investment. That's you know the same principle, same principle as a stock. Same thing with the book, you know. Except you set your price. So I challenge all y'all: go for it, invest in yourself. Like even if you have to go broke, like I'll be the first to tell you, and people in here can tell you too. Like I, I'm literally, I've been broke <laughs> for the last six months, but. At the same time, it's worth every penny because I know in the future, like that return is, is gone. Like I'm planting no seeds. I, like I'm, you gotta think ahead. Like that's the thing about investments. You can't think about right now. You gotta think about where, like relating back to the stock market. You gotta think about where is Amazon gonna be in the next 20 years? You know what I mean? Like even with our fund, like we this is a long term fund. So like it's the same strategy, same strategy. So just be smart about how y'all spend your money, man. Any more questions? Yeah, with that, would you say that that was one of the biggest um, things that you learned while being in corporate America? And if not, uh, what was the biggest business aspect, like business things you learned from at least your time while you were there that you could take from it? This, I mean, like, I'm learning more about it like every day. You know what I mean? Like, it's, if you, and I don't want to say too much, but if you understand the foundations of how corporate America was set up and what it was used for, it's all like manipulation. You know what I mean? Like even like the monetary system is all manipulation. Like you know what I mean? Like that's why we have like car loans. That's why we have.
mortgages because it's a cycle. Like now, I got to go to work because I got to pay that car loan off, got to pay this debt off. And it's just like, whoa, I'm running in a big cycle. And it's like, damn, like, I ain't even had no time for myself. You know what I mean? And that was like the biggest thing. Like, I was like, yeah. and I learned that, like, just hands on. Like, when I was in Ohio, I was like, man, it was, it was, I was at a low point. I'm like, I'm in here every day on this computer doing who knows what for who knows, you know, for who, 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 I don't even know. Like, I'm like, what am I doing? You know what I mean? And it's like, it's so much more out here. You know what I mean? There's so many people who we can inspire and we can lift up. But like, when you in that system, man, it's cage. I feel like for me, you know what I mean? And, it, and I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm not up here to tell y'all, like, don't go do corporate America. I'm just being honest, uh, I'm just being transparent about my story, you know what I mean? Just so that y'all can have that insight, that light, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that, that was probably the biggest thing I learned. Like, I call it like a mental slavery. You know, that's a, that's a tough terminology, but that's, that's really what it is, you know what I mean? Really? But at the same time, like, 